Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, Drew and I are gonna be reacting to a Christian YouTube couple called Nate and Sutton. Their content is pretty much exactly like Paul and Morgan. I actually think that they're friends with Paul and Morgan, but yeah, the content they make is pretty much identical. It's all about uh, relationships and family and marriage and dating all from a Christian perspective. And the video we're gonna be reacting to today is called Non-Negotiables in Christian Dating and Marriage. Basically, they're just giving their criteria for um, what they're looking for in partners. So we're gonna react to that. And at the end, Drew and I are gonna give our non-negotiables or what we look for in romantic partners, but from a secular perspective. And just to let you guys know before we start, Drew and I have have had COVID for about a week and a half. Um, I'm like 98% back to being normal. Drew, on the other hand, is still recovering. He still has a pretty bad cough. So apologies in advance if our voices are kind of grappily. Um, not much we can do about that. We still got to film. We still got to work. So just bear with us. <laughs> Editing Taylor here. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. If you are wearing headphones while watching this video, I suggest taking them off or turning down your volume for the next uh, minute or so because Nate and Sutton's audio quality is really, really bad at the beginning of their video. Um, the noise level is crazy and I can't really fix it. Um, Nate and Sutton, if you happen to be watching this video, uh, no shade to you at all because I've definitely had bad audio in the past, but um, try to noise reduce because uh, kind of sounds like you guys are in a washing machine a little bit. Ew! What are you doing? So babe, things are going really good. You know, I could really see you as my future wife. Uh, I just had a question for you. Okay. What are your thoughts uh, on the president? Oh, Biden. I think he's just such a sweet little old Stop. man. Stop. What the heck is me? <laughs> he was totally flexing in that shot, yeah. like on purpose. I like how Christian aesthetic is we're really wealthy and also don't want to offend anyone by taking any kind of real liberty with our style. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> What's, What's up, guys? Nate Sutton, Sutton back, back with another video, video. and today, today we are talking about the non-negotiables for marriage. <laughs> okay, so first of all, holy Chip and Joanna Gaines. Their house is so white. Yeah. Like, it's like they're on the sun. It's so white. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Christian wedding photographer's absolute dream. Yeah. Ugh. I feel like there's so many Christian channels, like, this is the aesthetic. Like, to just make everything as white as possible. If you can't tell, we've been talking about making a video about this lately. <laughs> Maybe that's another video. <laughs> but for real, today we're talking about the non-negotiable Christian dating in specific and what they would be for us and maybe give you some ideas of as you're dating and as you're looking for that, that someone things that you need to keep in mind, you need to watch out for so you don't find yourself. Yeah, this was actually a question from our last video when we were asking you guys to ask us questions that we've never answered. This was one of the questions we were like, oh, we could do a whole video about that. Mm -hmm. So here we are doing it. Let's go. So we individually created our own list of non-negotiables. I don't know what she wrote. She doesn't know what I wrote. I imagine they'll probably come out to be pretty similar. If we don't have a few of the same, I'd be surprised. But. Shall I go first since I'm a girl? Ladies first. So go ahead. <laughs> You're a Christian. All right. So my first one is they must be a Christian. <laughs> Got it. Believer. Is that one of yours? I have more, a lot more to say than that. I know. I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> but I'm saying is that one of yours? Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. You know, this may, be, may or may not be obvious to some of you guys, but I have lived and seen what happens to a couple that are not equally yoked you know the bible even calls us and instructs us to be equally yoked but 
Um, I have a family member who was married to a non-believer, and it ended disastrously. And the repercussions that they are having to go through for the rest of their life is unbelievable. All because they didn't align on this major point. So is being uh, an atheist a non-negotiable for you? N no. Yeah, I would agree. Like, yeah, no. Uh, this ties into like one of my non-negotiables. But before we get into that, like... First of all, I like how he starts out with this one is isolated anecdote about how he knew some people that were unequally yoked and their marriage ended horribly. So obviously you should not do that. Yeah. We were unequally yoked right. for like a year or two. Yeah. And we're still married. So and even we're if, an example of that working. Like even if you wouldn't have changed your position... It was working when you were a Christian. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I there are more factors than just people's religious beliefs, and it's not, like, inevitable that people will... The, the marriage will end in catastrophe if you don't, be, like, believe the same way religiously. That's yeah. so overblown. Yeah, so that was one of mine, too. Um, I was looking for a Christian, but I feel like in today's world, that term is very loose. Like, what does that really mean to be a Christian? I need to find a real, a true Christian. Yeah, the, the term Christian has always contained multitudes. There's always been diversity within Christianity. It has nothing to do with today's world. In fact, today's world is probably less diverse than it was at the beginning mm -hmm. of Christian history. But Specifically, what I was looking for is a Christian leader, like someone that has a relationship with Jesus, that goes to church, that reads their Bible, that doesn't just call themselves a Christian, but is like walking the walk, talking the talk. Like I wanted... I was looking for leadership qualities because if I'm looking for marriage and the man is called to lead the household, like I wanted a good one. <laughs> and I wanted someone. It sounds like she was looking for someone to lead her spiritually. Well, kind of be the head of the household in general, because according to their version of Christianity, that's what you're supposed to do. The man's yeah. supposed to lead. Yeah, I mean, the man is supposed to lead until the man stops being a Christian, and then he's supposed to get out of the way and stop being such an oppressive tyrant for daring to disagree with his wife on anything spiritual. <laughs> who was, like, unashamed to pray for us. Like, you know, they come to a date and they're like, let me bless the food, let me pray over you if you have a problem, things like that. So I wasn't just looking for someone that says I'm a Christian. I was looking for, like, the whole, like, I want them to show me mm. that they're a Christian. The second thing I was looking for is somebody that wants kids. That was a big mm. non-negotiable for me. Like if I didn't write that one down. If I met someone and they didn't want kids, I would have to just cut it off because that was a desire of mine. And I also want to throw in here that whenever you are dating someone, if they have things you don't like, I would never go into a relationship thinking like I can change them. Like they think that now, but I'm going to change them. We actually had a friend who did that. Um, they started dating. He knew that she didn't want kids, but he was hopeful. Like, well, she loves me and, you know, we're going to get married and then she'll change her mind. And she didn't change her mind. And so they ended up breaking up. Um, so I would just not go into it thinking they're not what I want, but I can make them be. Yeah, I actually very yeah, much agree I with that. I totally agree with that. And especially in, it seems like in Christian marriages, people think that, like, Christians will think that marriage is magical somehow some magical ability to change people especially and so yeah they'll go into it thinking that oh you know god will give us his blessing and that will empower us to do anything and be mm -hmm. so much better of people like no getting married will intensify any problem that pre-exists yeah so. yeah and i feel like especially christian women kind of fall fall to that they I, i've seen this is an anecdote, but like in my life there, I've known a lot of Christian women who've gotten into relationships knowing that this guy is, you know, has a lot of red flags, yeah. but they, they think that they can change him. Yeah. And I think that's kind of even pushed by some Christians because I'm thinking of the movie Fireproof, like oh, where yeah. the husband becomes a porn addict because he watches porn sometimes and the wife you know, starts praying for him and is like trying to talk to him about Christianity and everything. And eventually because of her like diligence and her 
leaning on God, she eventually does have an influence on him. So I feel like that narrative is kind of pushed by Christians. Redeeming someone who is broken is definitely a hugely popular narrative in Christianity. And I just think it's really, it's dangerous because especially when you're older, the likelihood of them changing is pretty low. Yeah. Yeah, very good. I actually just was uh, at a wedding with someone that I was speaking to and they just got divorced because seven years into their relationship, they realized that one of them didn't want kids and the other one did. Took them seven years? Yeah, so, and then they ended up getting divorced over because one of them really wanted kids and the other didn't, so. It's kind of obvious that they see dating as like a precursor to marriage by the way they're talking about it because they're assuming if you're dating, that means you're eventually going to get married and you're going to decide whether or not you want kids or whatever. But I do think it is important that, you know, if, if you are dating with the intention of marrying, that you have that conversation about oh, whether yeah. or not you want to have kids yeah. because that can be something that really affects your marriage and that might be a deal breaker for some people. Yeah. My next one that I actually just came up with as you were speaking is being on the same page financially. Not, not what I don't mean like you make the same. I mean you have the same mindset as far as like how you want to spend your money. Do you want to be in debt? Do you not care about debt? What kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Because all of these things can really take a toll on the marriage if you guys are running in opposite directions. You know, one person might want to live a really frugal lifestyle where the other person is all about luxury. I recently heard that two of the biggest reasons for divorce is a difference in opinion of how they handle their finances and uh, whether they want kids or not. So if you can nail those two things down, plus the first one that we gave you being on the same spiritual wavelength, then you're setting yourself up for much better chances of success. I think that is true, right? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. the The leading cause of divorce is money problems. And kid problems. And kid problems. Money problems, kid problems, and sex problems. Mm. I I think it's kind of funny, though. Like, their first three non-negotiables are basically just conservative values, like faith, family, finances. And unless you're in their conservative evangelical sphere, those non-negotiables might not apply to you at all. Mm. So they're obviously, you know, of course, talking specifically to Christians here. Right. And I also find it interesting that none of their non-negotiables so far really have to do with the character or personality of who they want to marry. They just have to do with, like, these specific conservative talking points Will almost personality come up later on well i have already watched this and <laughs> i have sort of okay but not really <laughs> you guys have been following us for a while you know that we were both virgins we married as virgins and that was something i wanted but i will say it wasn't a non-negotiable but i just want to put this in here to say don't don't settle like if you want that you, you go for that. I just thought, I was like, I'm, yes, I really want that, but I'm not going to find it. Like, there's not going to be a guy out there that has everything that I want and has that on top of it. So, you know, if, they're, if they have everything else perfect and they've messed up in their past, then that's okay. Like, that's kind of how I was going into it. Um, I just didn't have much faith, I guess, to be honest, that I would find someone that ha- was the whole package for me. But I definitely want to encourage you guys to, if that is on your non-negotiables list, don't let up on that you know it is possible to find that and if it's something that you desire and god knows that you know he gives us the desires of our hearts but also if the person is has had made mistakes in their past i was prepared to like forgive someone and be able to move forward because i thought that's what i was gonna have to do was she kind of saying like oh if you want to find a virgin then god will provide that for you but also if he doesn't provide that for you that's still okay It's like, which is it? Will God give you that if that's the the desire of your heart? Or will he not give it to you and you should still be okay with that? All I know is that if you are trying to get yourself a virgin, then uh, if you are over the age of like 24, that's going to be nearly impossible. Uh, Well, and that's kind of what she was saying. She didn't think that she would be able to find that. You're going to need to look in a church youth group that doesn't have a youth pastor who has messed that up for people, if you know what I'm saying. 
uh, or like go to a Christian college and only look at freshmen because that's that's going to be your dating pool there yeah. for that. I I do think that if that is something that's important to you, then yeah, stick to that. I just don't personally think that that's a very like that's an important thing. Yeah, you yeah. know, I don't. For me, it's not important that they're a virgin. <laughs> Not only that, I'm a believer that we tend to attract what attract our standards. So, you know, if you have that standard in your life and you have a standard of all these things, like I want a Christian, I want someone who's going to lead, I want someone who's going to be honest, I want someone that's a virgin, all these standards and you wear that, I do believe that you're, you're more likely to uh, for people to see that in you and you might find yourself with that kind of person in front of you. Isn't that kind of obvious? If you have standards, then people I think, will know what your standards are. I think he means like if you embody the the <clears throat> bits of character that you want to find in a partner, then, you know, those type of people will see that and, and you know, clump together with you. And I actually agree with that. Like for, for me, that was like the main thing that I did in when it came to dating. I didn't mm -hmm. look at all. I've never looked in any way i never tried even to date it was just i tried to be a certain kind of person and i did find myself surrounded by people who were similar and had similar standards for themselves that i had for myself and yeah you know, that's when you came along yeah i guess it's just the way he was wording it. it seemed like he was just saying that if you have standards and people know that you have standards you're gonna find people that meet those standards i don't know that just like seems kind of obvious to me but i i understand like that's probably he was saying if you embody that if yeah. you are that kind of person right. other people will see that and okay that makes sense yeah this is also we've said this a bunch in the past of like becoming the person you want to be with wants to be with mm -hmm. so you can't be going sleeping around and be like i want a virgin you can't be going around cussing and be like i want someone that doesn't cuss you can't be going around living a non-christian life and be like i want to find a good christian you know, you got to be that person. So you can't be setting your standards as like unfair to what you are, you know. I think that is a good point. I think that there are a lot of Christian men who do have that double standard. Oh, they yeah. might be, you know, oh, sleeping yeah. around, but they're insistent that their partner or who they want to marry be a virgin, mm -hmm. even though they don't even follow that lifestyle themselves. Yeah. I've seen that a lot with Christian men. Also, you know, they'll they'll be willing to abuse their position of power, they'll treat people badly, they'll have a holier-than-thou, narcissistic kind of attitude because they're a Christian man and things should just, you know, land in their lap, things should be easy for them. And then they expect their Christian woman to be, you know, soft and docile, mm -hmm. and, and it, which is not what they're being. So yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. I've seen that way too many times. Um, that was one of mine, by the way, too. Is I don't think I could have, I don't think I could have, bent on that area i think i had i think it had to be a virgin or, or i was going to be a virgin for the rest of my life you know what i'm saying um <laughs> a non-negotiable for me is the the person i'm looking for has to have boundaries meaning like if i was dating Sutton and she's like trying to cross my boundaries or pressure me into being sexual or pressuring me into doing things that were going against my convictions, that would have been a game changer. You know, that would have been a no, no. So looking for someone who has boundaries, who will be there to stop you, you know, um, for her to say, I don't want to do that. Or I uh, don't believe in lying. Or I don't believe in cheating. You I know? don't believe in dating two girls at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. All she right. kind of gave him the side eye there. <laughs> Like, was he dating more? Like, when they were dating, was he also dating someone else? Because it kind of seemed like that's there's maybe what happened. Deep Nate and Sutton lore there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like we there's something there that we do not know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think respecting your partner's boundaries is very important. I find it a little bit difficult to translate what they're saying into a non into non-Christian speak. Um, yeah, so everything is in Christian speak. Yeah, sure. they're talking about have boundaries, like don't be pressuring me to do something sexual. And so it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what they mean outside of Christianity. I mean, maybe what they're saying is someone who 
will have similar understanding of morality to me and won't pressure me to do things that I'm uncomfortable yeah, with. Yeah, that's what it seems like. If that's what they're saying, then yeah, I would I would agree with that. That's a that's a good thing. It's just I I wouldn't say like oh, you, you want me to do something sexual, like that's that's pushing my boundaries. That's too much. So, yeah. Yeah. A non-negotiable for me is someone that is funny. And that's like so lighthearted of a thing to be looking for, but it's just so important to me. Like when you think of growing old with someone, you know, looks and everything fades, but like their personality is always going to be there. And I love to laugh and I love being around people that make me laugh. Like when I think of the friends that I have, they're all really funny. They're all like, extrovert funny and I don't consider myself really to be that way like an, a funny extrovert but I gravitate towards those people because that's who I like to be around. So this is the first time that we're seeing them talk about a non-negotiable that has anything to do with the personality of their potential partner mm -hmm. and I actually very much relate to what she's saying because I tend to grab like I'm very much an introvert and I tend to gravitate towards more extroverted kind of like gregarious personalities and that is kind of i wouldn't say you have to be like because you're kind of like an extroverted introvert yeah like you don't have to be crazy extroverted but for me to kind of like balance out my introversion that is somewhat of a non-negotiable for me yeah am i funny pretty funny <laughs> kind of similarly to my last one is a non-negotiable for me is that they don't lie or cheat. If I see you lying, if I see you cheating, then I know what you're going to do to me. Yeah, I feel like lying has become so nonchalant and casual these days, like little white lies. You're like, oh, it's just a little white lie. But we really try to not lie about anything. Like even if it's small, even if it's so insignificant, like we just don't, we won't lie about it. Because you... Yeah, I agree with what they're saying there. I mean, yeah, having an honest partner is is great. It it is always weird to me to see conservative and Christian influencers always say, "Oh, well, you know, nowadays it's blah blah," blah as if that's never yeah. been a thing in the past. Like, I I don't know if lying has become more prevalent no. now versus you know however long ago. I think people kind of have always lied. Yeah. You always have an audience. God's always watching. And so really that's what I that's what it boils down to is like finding someone who is living their life as though God is always watching them and that they're always looking to please God. And so if they lie about the little things, they're more than likely going to lie about the big things. And you don't want a spouse that's going to be lying to you. I do agree. I like that they kind of started talking about how you shouldn't lie about even seemingly small things. Cause it kind of started out just being like, well, don't lie, be honest. And it's like, well, yeah, that's kind of obvious. Nobody wants a partner that's going to lie to them. But I do like that they kind of expanded on that and started talking about how like even small lies can like be a red flag. Cause yeah. I think that's definitely true. Um, small lies can lead to bigger lies, mm -hmm. but I don't agree with the whole don't lie because God's watching. You know, yeah. obviously I don't follow that reasoning, but also you shouldn't lie to your partner because that's an unhealthy dynamic. Yeah. You should want to be truthful with your partner so you guys have a healthy relationship, not just because somebody's watching you to make sure you're not right. lying. Yeah. A lot of the time Christians will have this mentality of, you know, don't do this thing because you could get in trouble with the with the boss, mm -hmm. you know, rather than the reason we don't do these things is because there's this underlying reason that if you do these things, it will degrade your relationship. Mm -hmm. It will degrade social harmony. And, and so I think this mentality really doesn't allow people to understand morality complexly. You know, we don't lie to each other because of the way that it affects our relationship. Yeah, we don't want to cause harm to each other. Yeah, and so we can think in our head, okay, you know, should I lie about this? Well, if I lied about this, then this would be the consequences in real life. Okay, I don't want those consequences in real life, so mm -hmm. I won't do it. Rather than being like, okay, should I lie about this? Well, Taylor won't know, but God will know. So I don't want God to be mad. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't. Do, yeah, yeah. I, I think that the the former way of thinking about it is going to get you better results and is going to 
inform or motivate a kind of intrinsic motivation right for cultivating your relationship in a certain yeah. way and not lying because the way they're thinking about it is kind of kind of an immature way of looking at relationships mm-hmm. like it's almost like oh i don't you know i'm a, like a little kid and i don't want to steal the cookie from the cookie jar because you know my parents might find out and i don't want to get in trouble yeah it's like it's just a very childish way of thinking about it i yeah. think Something else I was looking for is a guy that I've always, my dad always told me, like, if you want to see how a guy is, watch how he treats his mom or how he treats his sister or his grandma or just, like, women that are in his life constantly. And I was looking for someone that treated them, you know, respectfully and lovingly. And you did that. And that's how I'm married. (laughs) Um, My next one is that the person that I was looking for pursued God. You know, they didn't just call themselves a Christian. They didn't just go through the motions, going to church, praying at meals, but they actually pursued God. You know, they were diving into his word, seeking for wisdom, praying. You could see it in their lifestyle. You know, that the decisions that they made, the way that they talk, it just bleeds the Holy Spirit. And that's what I was looking for, and that's a non-negotiable for me. My last one is a guy, I was looking for a guy who had manners. You know, chivalry is not dead. I wanted someone that was, like, opening my doors for me and, like, treating me nicely and respectfully, you know. Uh, just, like, little things. Like, even pulling out chairs at restaurants. You don't do that for me, but I feel like that stuff is nice. It's, like, a nice gesture. <laughs> I feel like I've always struggled with this one a little bit, like... I definitely, I definitely think I like to be, you know, courteous and whatnot, but um, some things just seem a little corny for me. Like, if you're, like, waiting for me to, like, walk around the car oh, and yeah, open your door. Oh, yeah, I don't like door, that. I don't like that. I don't know. That, that's just never really resonated with me. I'm talking about, like, going into a restaurant and you open the door for me and let me walk in first kind of thing. Oh, well, yeah. Just, like, little manners like that. Um, I always appreciated that. And if I feel like if a guy walked in the door before me, I'd be like, are you serious? <laughs> I feel like that was a way to for her to hint to him that he needs to be doing that stuff for her because <laughs> it seemed like he it, he doesn't do that kind of thing. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, yeah, I do. I do actually relate to him in in saying that you know he tries to always treat people well, but certain things are from formalities that he finds kind of corny. Yeah, and yeah, I would maybe. agree with that. Like, I, and also this is just kind of a weird non-negotiable for me because anyone like any guy can open the door for you that doesn't mean that they're a good person or they have a good character that just means that they are southern yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's pretty much all that means it's kind of a stereotypical like r slash nice guy kind of thing yeah to to have all of those formal like you know to engage in all those formalities but you can you can hide behind engaging in those formalities mm-hmm. and and actually be a terrible person that opens the door and you know pulls back chairs for women. Yeah, and a lot of guys do that. Yeah. This one would be that the, the person that you're looking to marry is not looking for you to complete them. You know, and you can kind of hear that in their language like, "Oh, you know, once I find this person, I'll be happy." Or, just that uh, that concept of like they're looking to you to make them happy or they're looking to you to make them whole looking a non-negotiable for me was finding someone who was happy and complete and at peace even in their single days i mean yeah they might be looking for a spouse and having that as a desire of their heart which is fine but when you find someone who's looking to you to make them happy you're not going to make them happy I agree with that. Yeah, I think that's a very good one, actually. A lot of people, Christian and non-Christian, I mean, in my experience, it's been especially Christians have Mm -hmm. not thought that. Yeah. Uh, But Christian and non-Christian relationships absolutely need to be predicated on two functional, happy people. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of a unique take from like a Christian influencer couple. Yeah. Because kind of like the girl defines of YouTube, they kind of push this idea that you're supposed to find a husband. You don't have any value until yeah. you find a husband or you're you're not You're not complete. You're not complete until you're married cuz right. that's like a huge thing to them. Yeah. So, I feel like this is that, that was a good refreshing. Good yeah. That is the end of their video. Um and I thought we could talk about some of our non-negotiables as a secular couple. Sure. Um my first one is that we do 
have a similar similar base values like compassion or um respecting autonomy uh just treating people how you'd want to be treated like basic things but i don't care as much about the label so i don't care where that comes from so for you if you derive those values from christianity that's fine yeah. you know like i don't care about what you call yourself yeah i would agree if that's how you got those values, then that's great. If it's Christianity, if it's Satanism, if it's Buddhism, if it's just from the secular world, that doesn't matter. Like, I don't care about what you call yourself. Yeah. Like, that's way less important to me. Yeah, I would say that that's one of my non-negotiables, too, is that we're able to share our basic core values. Yeah. One of my non-negotiables is that the person be highly adept in introspection mm -hmm. i'm an extremely introspective person and so if my partner isn't introspective if they aren't constantly looking inward and analyzing you know how they got to the conclusions they got to how their emotions are all interwoven and affecting each other mm -hmm. and affecting their life analyzing their own motivations for things their own desires for things if, if they're not able to do that, then we're not going to get along well because then what would inevitably happen is I would find myself kind of trying to fill in the gap, introspect for them, analyze <laughs> things for them so that they yeah. can get like on my level where I need them to be. You are a very introspective mm -hmm. person. You've always been interested in looking into things and understanding yourself you've been able to understand certain things about yourself better than I've been able to. And I've been able to, you know, introspect and understand things about myself better than you. And we have complimented each other, helped each yeah. other out in, in those places. But fundamentally, you've always been as introspective as me. And that's a must for me. It's kind of tied to like having a high emotional intelligence. Is yeah. What it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think that's good. Because this is kind of somewhat a flaw that maybe both you and I have is that we tend to like psychoanalyze people or like fix other people's problems for them. <laughs> yeah. And like we can't like you can't be doing that, you know. Yeah. So it's important that your partner is able to like introspect and like figure out where their emotions are coming from um, and deal with some of their problems on their own because like we both have the tendency to like try to take over for the other person. So. Yeah. Um, one that I have and this is kind of one that they mentioned too is honesty. Um, but more than that, being very straightforward um, and your actions backing up what you say. Because I think it's really easy to just say all the right things. It's a lot harder to actually do mm -hmm. all the right things. Yeah. So for me, it's like important that I see that you're following up with what you're saying and that your actions back up what you say and that you're not just telling me what I want to hear. You yeah, know? I second that completely. Yeah. Another of mine would be that the person is structured, um, probably more naturally organized than I am. Uh, I'm not horribly disorganized, but I'm not super organized either. And so I like when someone can offset me, can, can balance me out a bit in being a little bit more consistent and mm -hmm. organized, structured in their life and the way that they think so that I can, you know, learn a bit from them. It's not so that they can, like, just pick up after me or something like that or, or make up for my weaknesses, but rather to allow me, like, set an example that I can learn from, someone mm -hmm. that I can, you know, hold myself accountable to when I have trouble being organized. That's kind of interesting that you say that because one of my non-negotiables is spontaneity, <laughs> which is kind of like the reverse of that. Yeah. And I think that we've developed these non-negotiables from being married to each other yeah. and learning from each other because I am more the organized one and you're the more like spontaneous one. And for me, I can get like set on a path and it's hard for me to uh vary from that mm -hmm. but sometimes you need to be able to do that in order to have fun <laughs> yeah so for me yeah like having somebody that's spontaneous and doesn't take themselves or life too seriously and can be kind of silly and goofy because i think that i like that's kind of my humor like i mm -hmm. i think like silliness and goofiness and just like making funny sounds like i i like yeah. that kind of thing 
And I, I will be like that on my own, but having somebody else that's also that way and can kind of draw that more out in me, I think is is a good thing. It kind of helps me not take things so seriously yeah. all the time. These specific complementary strengths and weaknesses were some that we used to discuss when we very first got together. And I remember that we'd be like, oh, you know, you are so much that way and I'm so much this way. And I really think that God designed us to fit together like puzzle pieces. And, you know, we thought that there was so miraculous and meant that, oh, we need to be together. Mm -hmm. And now we don't believe that we were designed to be together. It is coincidental that we do fit together in that way so well. But I, in a way, I mean, in a, in a completely non-supernaturalistic way, I do see that as just as, or maybe more miraculous than I, than I did then. I mean, the fact that we don't live in a universe where, you know, God has determined everything and made yeah. this perfect plan. And yet... Out of the billions of people on yeah. Earth, we found each other and we so, like, complement each other so well. Yeah, yeah. that's an amazing thing. And, I'm, and I feel extremely lucky yeah. to have found that, especially so early on. And I think that should be a non-negotiable that more people have. And it's not something that I hear talked about a lot is having those complementary strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. But you don't want to be so different that you have a hard time relating to each other. Right. But you do need to have kind of different areas where you're stronger or weaker in. Because um, I think that like for a partnership, even with multiple people, like having that really, really helps to build a healthy relationship. Absolutely. So I wrote all of these down <laughs> and I wrote a lot. I'm going to combine two. Uh, so one of mine is that they need to have like a very strong, like have strong interests and hobbies. Um, and they also need to love to learn. And you definitely, yeah, I'm like definitely oh, from things. the <laughs> day we met, like we were talking about our different interests. Um and like our hobbies and stuff. And we yeah. really connected on that. And I think for me, I have like very, like, you know, my special interests. I want my partner to also have special interests too. And like, we can connect on that. So yeah. I absolutely get behind those. I, I grew up in a culture um, in the fundamentalist church where having strong interests and having, you know, real commitments or interests in, in certain hobbies, uh, was just so strongly discouraged. I mean, mm -hmm. you wanted to conform and be as boring as possible. I do not understand that. And mm -hmm. I, the fact that I, I mean, like I remember, you know, as a, as a teenager, I taught myself multiple instruments. I taught myself multiple like extreme sports and I did those mm -hmm. things. And I, I loved, you know, studying philosophy. I was always reading a book and those were things that I thought, you know, I do just because I want to do them, but also I think they make me pretty interesting. Yeah. And I was surrounded by people that were like, well, why would you do that? And I was, I was so miserable. Mm. And so, you know, going to college, I found plenty of people who had strong interests, mm -hmm. but I realized when, you know, not looking for but being aware that I may come across a potential partner, that that was something yeah. that was important to me. And yeah, when we connected, I mean, we were just friends and there was no feelings involved, but we connected over our shared interests in playing music. And yeah. then, you know, like I thought your music tastes were really cool. <laughs> I do have really cool she music does. taste. <laughs> and yeah, that's definitely something that attracted me to you. And I think also just someone having strong interests shows that they can be committed to learning a new skill and that they don't value conformity so much that they're afraid to stick out mm -hmm. in case one of their interests or hobbies might be a little weird it might not be you know what the cool kids do or yeah. whatever another of mine is being highly empathic mm -hmm. um i tr i purposely started developing my own sense of empathy just really intentionally when i got to college um and since then, I have developed a sense of empathy that I've had to kind of like rein in mm -hmm. because it can it can be too much. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my, you know, my ability to understand or feel someone's emotions based on very, very subtle cues is like way overclocked. And if another if my partner can't 
understand that or can't do that to a certain extent on their own, then we're going to be on two different pages constantly. Um, the way that I view emotions, the way that I am perceiving a situation emotionally needs to be something that's somewhat intuitive to the other person. Mm -hmm. But also I think that having a really intentionally developed sense of empathy means that you are a morally focused or morally cultivated person. Mm -hmm. Because you're attuned to how your actions affect other people. Exactly. If someone is so is just more self-interested than interested in understanding how other people may be affected by the things they do, then there's no way that's going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually something that you and I have uh, in common is that we are both empathic. <laughs> like, no, but we are both very like aware of the feelings of others to a degree that can be unhealthy. Yeah. And we like have to keep that in check sometimes because it can be overwhelming. Like for me, it can be like impossible. Like I can walk into a room and I can immediately know what like everyone's mood is. And it can be hard for me to like go about my whatever I was going to do and not be affected by how other people feel. So yeah. Yeah, it's something that I, like both of us, I think, have to work on not doing as much. Yeah. Okay, the last one for me is that it's important for my partner to be somebody that fights for the underdog or the disenfranchised or people that are perceived societally as outsiders. I have that, like, I've always been somebody who, like, gravitates more towards people on the fringes. Yeah. And can relate to them or see those type of people more than other people can. And it's important to me that my partner is also sensitive to that as well. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And uh, that is a character trait that I know both of us have had mm -hmm. since we were kids. I mean, our, our groups, our, our group of friends and church youth group were all the weirdos and yeah. the outcasts <laughs> and the underdogs and the people that other people wrote off. Yeah. So, yeah. I think what really differentiates our non-negotiables from Nate and Sutton's is that we, as long as we have, you know, like our, our base values are the same, we care less about like our partner coming to these exact specific conclusions, the yeah. same conclusions that we've come to. And we value more being able to have hard discussions yeah. about topics. It's more about being able to share the process yeah. and the journey than come to exactly the same conclusions yeah. on everything. And it seems like for them, it's very important that their partner, you know, believe exactly the same thing, has the same ideas in the same place financially. Like, it's like everything has to, like they have to come to the same conclusions about everything. And I think that's kind of dangerous. I think it can be. I do wonder if that would be a common difference between conservative and especially conservative Christian couples and more free thinking couples like us. You know, one values conclusions and the other values being able to share the process. The process. Yeah. So I guess let us know in the comments what you think about that and we might be able to uh, come to some kind of conclusion maybe yeah. on that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, let us know. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons who help make these videos possible. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. If you'd like to follow me on social media, my Instagram is Taylor underscore the underscore antibot and my Twitter is the antibot, although I don't really ever go on Twitter, so... If you want to follow me, probably follow me on Instagram. If you'd like to support this channel financially, a link to my Patreon will be down in the description and I'll see you all in the next one. Say bye! <laughs>